Hello and welcome. You're watching Arts TV Weekly News Review with me, Pete Nash. Each week, we'll be bringing you the major news items from across Ethiopia and the region. In a recent press release, the president of Ethiopia's Patriots Association, Lij Daniel, likened the country's current challenges to the foreign aggression it faced 80 years ago. He made the statement on Ethiopia's 80th Victory Day and said that what was happening then is comparable to what is happening now. He stressed that Ethiopia's enemies are attempting to divide the country along ethnic and religious grounds. He also said, even governments of powerful countries are being influenced to side with enemies of the state, and treasonous domestic cliques are trying to disintegrate the country. Using powerful language, Mr. Daniel Jote said, while Ethiopia's enemies from outside and within gang up against her, they can inflict wounds but will never be victorious. Furthermore, Ethiopia shined as a beacon of hope and pride, not just to its own people, but also to the entire black population. US News Global has announced that Addis Ababa University, the renowned and pioneering higher education institution, is to be included in the 2021 list of the top 10 best universities in Africa. It was disclosed that Addis Ababa University is positioned as a leader among the universities in East Africa and ranked 553rd in the world. US News Global which ranks university as indicated that Addis University has registered a marked improvement, moving up from the 616th last year. President of the university, Professor Tessor Weldehana, said that they will keep working hard to make sure the institute registers even better future successes and be at the forefront of the academic world in, in years to come. According to US News Global, the top five universities in the continent are in South Africa, with Cairo University placed at sixth position. It also disclosed that Gondar University attained the 20th position in the list of best universities in Africa. The International Press Freedom Day was marked in Ethiopia with a stakeholders panel discussion, with participants drawn from the nation's press and media. During the forum, it was stressed that media professionals must be allowed to work with unrestricted access to information and without fear of reprisal or retribution. The other core item deliberated upon was the media professionals must refrain from creating and distributing fake news and avoid dissemination of hate speech. Deputy Mayor of Addis Ababa, Adanech Ababe, has announced that heroic patriots are to be given free healthcare in all government hospitals and clinics. In addition to the free healthcare, Mrs. Adanach announced that the city government has decided to allocate land for the Patriots Association to build its headquarters and for use for other income generating schemes. In a speech she delivered during the holiday celebrations, she pointed out that the day marks the heroic victory of the Patriots over the aggression of fascist Italy. She also said Italy had tried to divide the country along ethnic and religious lines, but without success. The heroic patriots had become aware of these attempts and effectively dealt with Italy's attempts. She called upon present-day Ethiopians to draw lessons from this. She asked for Ethiopians to strengthen the unity of the country and overcome the plot which some foreign enemies are attempting to enact. In Prime Minister's Victory Day message, Dr. Abbey said there are three lessons we can learn from the victory of the heroic Ethiopian soldiers over the Italians 80 years ago. The first, he said, is supporting a unified country above anything else. He pointed out that the Patriots may have had complaints against the administration back then, but they saw past internal divisions and defended their country from its enemies. The second lesson, he said, is to fight to save the country without waiting for instruction from a single organisation or person. He noted that even after the emperor went into exile, patriots organised themselves and collaborated on military operations using their own initiatives and individual strengths to push for victory. The third major point to learn, said the Prime Minister, is that what saves a country is unity amongst its citizens. The brave men and women of the anti-colonial struggle did not let ethnicity, language or religion stop them from uniting under one banner. The Prime Minister completed his message by saying diversity of ideas is a virtue, not a curse for a country. He concluded by saying we can oppose and be against the government, but we cannot oppose and be against 
our country. This week, the People's House of Representatives voted to officially declare Chennai and the Tigray People Liberation Front as terrorist organisations. The House deliberated and approved the motion given by the Council of Ministers in a session held last Thursday at the conference hall of the Prime Minister's office. It was reported that the decision was reached by assessing the activities of the two organisations and agreeing that they fulfilled the conditions in the Terrorist Crimes Prevention and Control Proclamation. In a separate statement from the Federal Attorney General, it explained that by labelling these organisations, it created more capacity for law enforcement agencies to prevent and control major crimes. He went on to state, it is important to remind the public not to cooperate with terrorist organisations and to refrain from providing any support to them. Residents of Asosa town near the Ethiopian-Sudan border refute the claim that Benishangul Gumez region belong to Sudan and that any claims along these lines are wishful thinking. When interviewed by the Ethiopian news agency, the residents of the city also stressed the need for Ethiopian people and government to unite and focus on resolving domestic issues. Mr. Fakadu Walde Maskel, a resident of Asosa, pointed out that Ethiopia had given tremendous support to Sudan over the past years. He referred to the role Prime Minister Abe and the Ethiopian government played in bringing conflicting Sudanese parties together to resolve their differences through dialogue and negotiation. He thought it regrettable that the Sudanese government had forgotten the sacrifice Ethiopia and its people had made to strengthen its nation. The Ministry of Education, in collaboration with Save the Children, has launched a school feeding program to be carried out in 499 schools in the Sadama region. The program aids to provide balanced nutritional meals to help better school attainment. In the past, nutrition has been directly linked to school performance, with malnourished children doing far worse than their peers. State Minister of Education, Mr Millian Matawas, said the students' feeding program is essential to sustain the life and education of this generation, who are currently feeling the effects of man-made and natural misfortunes in the region. Deputy Administrator of the Sadama region, Mr. Bayani Berisu, commented that for many children, the program is enabling them to return to school and continue their education. He expressed the commitment of the regional government to support the success and the sustainability of the program into the future. Earlier in the week, Prime Minister Abi Ahmed opened the newly constructed highway connecting Mojo to Batu. The four-lane motorway is divided into two segments, 56 kilometres from Mojo to Maki and a further 36 kilometres from Maki to Batu. The road costs 6.3 billion burr, with funds obtained from the African Development Bank and Exim Bank of Korea. There are six linkages with existing roads and 45 bridges or tunnels allowing pedestrians to pass across. Perimeter fences have been carefully constructed to keep the highway free from animal and human movements. The next phase of the road will connect the 110 kilometres from Batu to Hawassa. The construction is expected to be completed in the next 18 months. Ethio Telecom has taken a further step into the fintech market by launching its first ever mobile payment service. Fintech companies use new technologies to improve the delivery of financial services to its consumers. Ethiotel's new service, Telibur, is a comprehensive, community-friendly mobile money transfer system aimed at boosting inclusive financial services across the country. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, regional heads of state and senior government officials attended the launch in Addis on Tuesday. The mobile payment service will allow customers to send, receive and purchase goods using their mobile phones. The service seeks to address the existing limitations in Ethiopia where, currently, only 35% of the population has access to financial services. The new service will promote a healthy financial flow and help the country to transform towards a sustainable digital economy. Telibur Mobile, in its initial phase, will enable the 53 million Ethio Telecom subscribers to use its services throughout the country. On the 29th day of the holy month of Ramadan, a massive street iftar, which is the breaking of daily fast for Muslims, was organised in Addis Ababa on Tuesday. The event was attended by over 10,000 Muslims who broke their fast at sunset in a huge 
street meal that extend for over four kilometres in the heart of the metropolis. The service prepared by the Muslim faithful is a significant display of religious harmony and tolerance where people from different faiths extended their support by cleaning the streets and helping to prepare before the ceremony started. Notable public and government figures, along with thousands of regular citizens, expressed their appreciation for the ceremony and a peaceful way it was conducted. Grand Haji Mufti, chairperson of Ethiopian Islamic Council, has expressed his thanks to the organizers of the event, which he said was a manifestation of interfaith brotherhood and unity amongst Ethiopians. This event represents the record for the largest number of people who attended a street iftar in Africa. Ethiopia is often referred to as a country of different faiths where its citizens live in mutual respect, brotherhood, harmony and peace. This brings us to the end of this week's weekly news review on Arts TV. I've been Pete Nash. Thanks for watching and catch you next time. Visa, the global leader in payments technology, on Monday announced ArifPay as the winner of the first Visa Everywhere Initiative Challenge in Ethiopia. With participation from 59 fintechs, the initiative received many and varied applications that sought to address digital payment challenges in the country. ArifPay is a mobile point-of-sale electronic payment platform designed for use by merchants, banks and consumers in Ethiopia. It would allow any business or consumer to transfer money, make invoices or pay taxes. Here to give us more information about ArifPay is Habtamu. Habtamu, tell us about ArifPay. Thank you for Peter. Uh, so uh, ArifPay is a uh, uh, card processing uh, application that you download on your smartphone for face-to-face uh, -face transactions. And then we have an uh, online payment gateway for you know, businesses such as e-commerce and taxi handling. So we provide API, you integrate it with your own you know, online business, and then you'll be able to accept online transactions without you know, um, having to go through the hassle of you know, carrying cash in Ethiopia. Tell me, how do you, how do you use Arafay? How do you access the services? Sure. So uh, for face-to-face -face transactions, we uh, pretty much provide this uh, card reader to uh, merchants, uh, you know, across Ethiopia. And once you uh, register with our uh, payment platform, uh, pretty much, you know, when you have a walk-in customer with, you know, ATM card of any of the banks within Ethiopia, so you will be able to um, swipe or insert and uh, be able to make um, you know transactions, so you just do cashless transaction, right? But for um, online transactions, we we don't need that card. We have physical card reader. We have API, which allows you to enter your card information online, and then you punch in your um, you know uh, pin code, and you you will be able to uh, make transactions from the comfort of your couch. Um, and additionally, for face-to-face uh, -face transactions, let's say you don't want to carry around your ATM card. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you download our application from you know, Play Store or App Store. Then you punch in your information into the Arif Pay, um, uh, you know, post application. So that way, without you know, having to go to a, a certain uh, places, you can make a payment such, such as you know, utility bills or your traffic fines. So you, you will be able to pay it without you know, providing the physical card information. So pretty much we convert this into a digital ATM card. Great. Hopefully we won't be paying too many traffic fines. Exactly. Uh, but it sounds very convenient exactly. for all other payments. Exactly. Um, uh, you were up against some stiff competition. Absolutely. The, through the Visa Competition Initiative. Yeah. Were you surprised when you won? We were really surprised. You know, honestly, there were about 59 applicants, and then, you know, most of the, you know, the fintechs, they came up with amazing, amazing products. And some of them actually have been in the business since 2016. They have so much, you know, traction and, you know, volume and active customers, millions of customers. So uh, we were a bit worried that, you know, the, you know, since they have traction, attraction and we haven't started, you know, a service yet. So we were really surprised that uh, to win, but we are 
very thankful that Visa was, you know, able to see our vision and 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 empowering the small and medium, uh, you know, enterprises, and you know, digitizing pretty much the Ethiopian economy, and then you know, having access uh, to finance to you know to to you know, in rural areas, mm. you know, where bank is not able to reach out. So that's the, st the strategy. Okay. Yeah. What do you think Arif Pay provided that the other your competition wasn't able to? You know, one is uh, the fact that we are, you know, uh, our business is targeting, you know, the small and medium enterprises. You know, when we empower, you know, the small and medium enter enterprises, they will be able to empower their community. They will be able to serve their community and they will also be able to, you know, uh, outreach uh, more customers. So that way we will be able to, to reduce poverty and we will help businesses to, you know, uh, pretty much perform better. I think that's the target that, you know, Visa was able to see and that's the target that we were, we were able to, you know, provide. And secondly is the convenience that we want to provide. You know, we don't want you to spend hours in line to pay for, you know, water and electricity, right? We just want you to be, you know, at home or at work, you know, just, you know, spend a couple of minutes and be able to do all this online transaction. We'll empower you, right? Or empower every Ethiopians. That's, that's the strategy. And thirdly, just that, you know, we don't have a credit system in Ethiopia. You know, if you want to take out a loan, everything is based on uh, collateral. If you don't have a collateral, you, you don't get a loan but here we'll be able to see the spending habits of consumers so that way banks will be able to provide you know uh, personalized you know um, loan or personalized banking and I think that's what Visa was able to see and and we're thankful that they figured that out mm. yeah I imagine some of the people listening to this might have concerns about the security yep. aspects yep. of Arif Pay. Yep. Can you just say a little bit about that? Sure. So the security part is obviously, you know, Ethiopia is a third world country, so definitely our security is vulnerable. So what we were able to do is we were able to uh, bring in the international expertise and we are devices AMV and AMV to certified, which means we are up against, you know, companies in the U.S. So the security is uh, very tight, is done based on the PCI DSS uh, certification and guidelines. So uh, our consumers don't really have to worry about, uh, uh, you know, the security aspect of it. It's, it's definitely then based on the, sta the international standard. And I guess that being associated with Visa as well also adds to the safety and security. Absolutely, absolutely. That's the number one priority. We don't compromise in security and definitely we work with the best. And, mm. and I think that's our dream is, you know, becoming a reality. I think this is certainly a service that Ethiopia is ready for. Where, what are the time frames uh, for Arif Pay to be launched? So, uh, you know, like I said, uh, this product has been, um, you know, under development for the past four years. We went, through, we went through all the security testing. We've passed that and then the feasibility test in terms of the business plan. We passed that as well. So the National uh, Bank of Ethiopia is on the final stage of issuing us uh, the license. We expect to get the license um, mid-June. So, you know, if we get the license in the morning, we'll be, you know, uh, we're ready to go in the afternoon. So we have a ready-made product that have been tested with multiple banks and, and, and we're ready. So as soon as we get the license, uh, hopefully in June, we'll, we'll be able to uh, go live and provide the service. So people will be able to download the, lap, the, the application from mid-June from mid onwards if things go according to plan. Exactly. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank this, you, Peter. This sounds like an incredible service for Ethiopia. Thank you, Peter, for having me. Thank you.